Women Matters, and we have arrived at November 2023. It's almost Christmas, isn't it? And then a new year arriving. I, I don't know. Time seemed to accelerate, at least in my life. It's, it's like crazy. But I'm glad that for many, many years, I have you as, uh, how do you say, a accompaniment of my <laughs> of my life. And that's really, really, I'm really glad about that. So mm -hmm. as uh, people maybe know, I'm Heidi in Italy, and I give over to South Africa. <laughs> Thank you, hello everyone. My name is Hanli and I'm in Cape Town, South Africa. And I was just saying to Heidi and, and um, Christine earlier that we have lovely summer weather. <clears throat> Our sun goes down later here in Cape Town in summer, so we still have all evening ahead. Then it's still light, especially in midsummer, which I love. I'm also not a winter person. I prefer the sun. So I'm really happy. My whole mood changed since we have all the sun. And I'm really deeply grateful for that. And as you were speaking about time earlier, Heidi, I've also had the opportunity in the past month to attend a series on time. It was hosted by Perspectiva. And it was just wonderful. It was just wonderful. It We, had, we did such amazing things during some of these sessions um, to give us a different taste of time and our experience of time. And before this, um, I cooked dinner for my friends where I'm staying here in Cape Town. And I showed, I told him to watch a, a show on Netflix. It's called All, we, All the Light We Do Not, Cannot See. All the Light We Cannot See. And it's a really touching, deeply moving story. And But it, it, it takes you back to, to the World War II. But it, it was just, again, to feel the difference in time patterns. It's beautiful to sense a different time pattern, although you haven't been alive at a specific time or you, you're not alive in a specific situation. It's really interesting for me. Thank you. I'm complete for now. I'll pass to Christine East. East. Hmm, that's me. <laughs> it's just wonderful to be back. We were just realizing that um, the last time I had a connection was in March. It's just, I, I can't, I mean, I just can't even fathom that. You know, it's, it's such a long period of time. And it's so good to be together. And I kept holding this, nobody's going to mess with this time frame. I'm going to do it. And I got so anal about it <laughs> that I even contacted Heidi and made sure that I had the right link. <laughs> and I did, which was wonderful. And my heart's just happy to be here. I'm Christine King. I'm in USA, North Carolina, outside of Asheville. And um, I've been doing a great deal of traveling, and now I feel settled. Some of the traveling was challenging with um, family members that I haven't seen in a long time. And so I had to adjust myself to, whoa. That's how this person is very, very different. And this one is, and so it's almost like meeting them for the first time because it'd been maybe three years, um, partly because of COVID and then for other reasons too. So um, I'm just, I've just come, I haven't even unpacked yet. I've just gotten home and um, I kind of feel like my eyes are seeing differently, <laughs> which is um, surprising. So yes, I pass it along to Christine Bless. Hello everybody, I'm uh, Christine Habib in Carlsbad, California. And um, things that are on my mind are in terms of time. <laughs> I feel like I'm always, uh, not always, but often filtering th things through this sense of mortality. Like, how much more time do I have to do something? Is it worth doing because I'm 68? And maybe I don't have enough time left to start something big. Um, I don't know, various thoughts that all have to do with mortality and kind of realizing, um, you know, I don't have an endless amount of time at this point. 
And I think this is a feeling that's really only come over me the past year or two, and maybe because I'm also changing up with work um, and doing less hours at work. So that also kind of makes me re uh, reimagine the future and reconsider how I want to spend my time. How do I want to spend it that I'm going to enjoy? Um, yeah, so that's how I'm relating to it. Um, on my mind, my my brother had has had two brain aneurysms, both of which were repaired successfully, but he's going in for another angiogram um, tomorrow uh, where they can check on it because it's the same vessel in his brain and um, the aneurysms were kind of next to each other. So they're keeping a closer eye on that. So my brother is, he just turned 76. And um, again, kind of thinking I'm going to go see him. I saw him in October, going to see him and, and my sister again in February and just trying to be mindful uh, that uh, time is not something that we're guaranteed. <laughs> we don't know. So thinking about him and uh, hoping uh, everything goes well. And other than that, things are pretty, pretty much just chugging along. Uh, Change of seasons coming up here, uh, which I'm enjoying. This is a nice time in San Diego. The fall is probably the best season that we have. Warm, not humid, delightful days, sunnier, sunnier than the summer. So, and oh, uh, Hanalee, I wanted to say that uh, my good friend traveled to South Africa, because that's where she is from. She's lived in the States many years now, over 30 years. Um, and she was my neighbor. And she took her children for the first time to South Africa. And they're they're adults now. Um, and she's wanted to take them for the longest time. So I saw all of her travel photos. And oh my gosh, what a beautiful, beautiful country. I couldn't believe it. It was just the the flora and the fauna that she showed in her pictures, just amazing vistas. She went all the way from Cape Town up to where the falls are in, is it Zim Zimbabwe or is it Zaire? Zim I don't know. Zim Zimbabwe, yes. Yes. And um, pictures of the falls. And it was just amazing. Some of the wild animals that would come right up to where they were staying. It was, it was great. So it made me feel like, oh, I want to see South Africa sometimes. It was gorgeous. So I'm done. I will turn over to Heidi. Yeah, thank you. I, I will turn over to Gertraud and good that you are here. We are talking uh, still the, the check-in, but it has come out that we are talking about time and somehow also time and mortality. And I thought, unless you have a different topic, but I thought as we are in November, and November is considered, at least in our places, the, the month of the deaths, um, you know, I thought we could pick this as a topic. But first, uh, still uh, check in to get out. I was just thinking that uh, Christine King has the right colors for to to fight <laughs> November depression, the yellow and the orange, or yeah, or, um, yeah. Sorry for being late. We just had the last call of a seminar that went over eight weeks and we just had to do an appreciation round at the at the end <laughs> so I'm um I couldn't couldn't come earlier um oh, ooh, uh, <laughs> to land here I had a wonderful session on a wonderful seminar on Saturday. I can talk about it on a later date um, because that was just amazing. Um, and 
I'm going to be another time grandma. <laughs> yeah, so number five is on a, on her or her his way. And yeah, I'm recovering last week. I was sick, so yeah. This is... I try to f find out, but maybe I was so much in the other sphere. <laughs> so now I'm here, uh, but I cannot think much of what I did this last two weeks. It's not, oh, and I'm I'm fine with the topic. It's not necessary that we do uh, the, we talk about how we passed the last. Uh, 14 days you know it's just, I'm here I'm here yeah, that's so, the um, most important thing yeah <laughs> yeah I'm here too I had F still friends here and we have done the olive harvest and the, another friend was here with her three little children and I'm expecting tonight the, the Swiss friends who we plan to have together to create together the cooperative Let's hope that it goes ahead. And uh, so a lot of movement and a lot of, you know, time is going, you know, away. And um, for the topic, I can relate to that very much, Christine. I mean, it was when Mark died, it was a time where I very much was into these thoughts about how much time and how is it? And we are mortal. Before I was quite okay with it, but then, you know, there came another, um, let's say, fear. And then I was, um, I'm, I'm better. It's not that I have direct fear of, of, of death, but these thoughts also almost every day, which I think, yeah, how much time is there still? What, what, what can I still do? can I allow myself just not to do anything maybe or is it worthwhile to do this or all the ideas of life or also what we did with the help of some friends last week or two weeks ago to get out of a, a, a place um, where many people left their stuff in my place because I have space, you know, and I, we started to get it everything out and we start to throw away. And I need to do it with other things, you know, with books or, or my music. I would like to find people who wants to, to have the printed music I have and things like that. So I'm thinking about this too. What what is really important now in this situation when we are really lucky we will live still 30 years but is this really lucky then I mean uh, some people are good with 100 you know but some people are not good with 80 or with 70 so that's you know this in insecurity this uh not knowing how your health is and how it will develop. And for me, for instance, the big fear is that I will be alone in this house and completely ill and nobody is here and I need help and cannot do it uh, to be, not be autonomous anymore. This is a need help and have to ask other people for help and these things, you know, this is really my my concern which is still oh, it's far away but who knows another friend she she was uh, telling me that she had an accident only a week ago and the the car is completely broken she didn't she's not hurt at all but she was so lucky you know and these things can be with us any any day only when we are getting older, we are thinking more about it might be more probable that these things arrive no, in one way or other. So this is for the starting out the topic. So how is it for you? Is it also part of your life to think about this? And in what way do you think about it? Is it depressing or is it giving you some new insights or some new energy, things like that. I, I would like to, to discuss with you. 
jump in with that because I really do relate very much because what we have in common is that we have a home and we kind of live alone. I know you have people coming and going um, at certain times, but at the core, it's you and your home, your land. And that's my situation as well. Um, I've got seven acres. I'm, I've got the house just the way I want it to be. And I've got a separate apartment completely, which was one of the back of my mind's idea was someday if I need help, they could be there. But it would have to be the right person. So that's my idea of if I need help and I can't take care of myself, I'd have to be the right person who would benefit from that. And maybe like an exchange, therefore not so very expensive, providing home for them. So I'm thinking about it, but also I'm thinking about exactly what you were saying, Christine, about what has value at this point. It really touches my heart. And what do I want to, I, I think I'm the happiest if I'm giving in some way. When I'm adding something into the world, that's how I'm the happiest. Since I've been traveling so much, I haven't had a chance to be doing that, and I think I'm going to make a shift of attention and see what what can I be offering. Probably something related to the Enneagram, but I mean, again, I'm not even unpacked yet. So I guess I'm. It's not time to know, but it's time just to be really listening to intuition, letting intuition guide me the whole way. Because if if I make space for that. It usually um, goes to the highest place. So that's really what I would have to offer myself if I just make sure I give that the high priority, I suppose. That's where I am at the moment. I'm sure other thoughts might come forward today, but that's right off right off the top. Thank you. You're muted, Christine. Christine, Christine. Ma'am, <laughs> not Gertrude. I was wondering if um you think of the future, you think of time in a lot of ways through your grandchildren. Just wondering. We I mean we often do that through our kids, but now you with grandkids and and a fifth was wondering. Are you asking the other Christine or, or the others? Gertrude. No, I'm sorry. I said uh, Gertrude. Yeah. Ah, Gertrude. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I heard it. <laughs> um, actually, when, uh, uh, when I thought, where do I start? It, it was with the nursing homes. I was um in charge of everything that was not nursing so like room and border and uh, technique garden yeah everything um so one day i met a man a new a new tenant in a wheelchair and he was so much looking like my father it was just like oh my god and my father was, he turned, yeah, two days after his 92nd birthday, he died. And he was four days in bed. Um, so he was sick for some time, but uh, still being able to, yeah, to move around and difficulties to talk because of Parkinson's and so, but this man, he was 78 or so, 70 something. And he was in a wheelchair. He was, had dementia. He had all kinds of stuff. So um, I was like to have those two at the same time. <laughs> that was almost shocking for me that it could 
come either way. So, so we had a lot of people, I mean, when you come into a nursing home, it's not the, the nursing that, that doesn't work anymore or that you need, but you cannot stay at home because you cannot do normal stuff at home. And so I can relate to what Heidi said. Um, it's not so much that a nurse comes in and out um, and, and does some shots or whatever. It's more that you cannot live on your own anymore and you have to have for all the little things that you have to have uh, some support. And actually at that time, I was more thinking of how will it be? And it's some years ago. At the moment, I'm more like <laughs> when I did my, my training, my 10X training, I feel more, I'm working on being stable, having enough balance that I don't tip over, having enough muscles that it works, having a good nutrition. And, and I'm now regenerating my, my intestine. So, so it's interesting. I, I don't say, oh, I, it never happens to me. That's not the point. It's more like I'm actively thinking, what do I need so I can um, be self-reliant longer? And what you asked me, uh, Christine, um, there is also one thing I did the training for was to be able to play with the kids. So I didn't want to be just sitting somewhere and saying, oh, <laughs> don't come too close. Um, yeah, there was one motivation as well. And I see through my kids, through yet to see them as able people, very able in the world and, and being responsible for their kids. I, I, I see that, I mean, life goes on in a good way with them. So even one working for UNICEF, the, the other for Greenpeace. So, so it's like they are doing a job that really makes a difference in the world. And, um, so yes, yes, definitely. This is something where say the good lives on. I mean the that what is essential to me and I see them to talk to their kids and how they are in their relationships. And so it's there is something that I leave behind whenever. I'm going to go that that warms my heart so yeah and for my brother he's he's good not not healthy in the but he says he's good and to his birthday I sent him a, a friend of mine through a picture him and me sitting there he in the early 80s me in the late 80s and I have a baby on my arm so my great grandchildren and his grandchildren so yeah and so that's that's what I want to sitting on a bench with my brother and we're both good yeah that's And you said something about time. I, I I have the feeling that time goes by, I don't know. It can stay in meditation or in a good conversation. It can stay and just expand. And in others, it's racing. So I don't have a real good relationship to time.
Yep, it's me. Thank you, Gertrude. When you were speaking now, I was literally feeling the energy going down my spine. <laughs> like, <laughs> so especially when you spoke about your children and they that they are, you know, they are responsible for their own lives and the young ones, the little ones and stuff. But I really felt life when you were speaking. So it was beautiful. Thank you for that. And for myself, it's interesting in this uh, series that I told you when I checked in about all the life we cannot see. At one stage, um, the young girl asked an older man, do you want to live before you die? And that really stuck with me. It was really, it really sat deep, you know. What do you want to do while you're still here? And it's not about doing so much as living. And it really, it doesn't matter. It's just, it could be a state of being. It doesn't need you have to go and do lots, lots of activities and stuff. But it really sat deep with me. Um, do you want to live before you die? And what does that mean to you? Um, and I think for everybody it will mean something different. But I also have like you, Gertrude, for me, it's I'm attempting to live as healthy as possible that I'm healthy into my later age on earth and to take care of my own health on all different levels, not only physically, um, and also my attitude, how I approach life. And yes, we all go through dips and turns, and, but it's how we deal with that. And I think I, have no, I myself have no fear of death at all. And I know it's the ones who stays behind, but in terms of approaching old age, my mom, she was really well to share her first her, her strokes when she was in her 90s. She bought a brand new car when she was 87. <laughs> she, she was <laughs> on top of the world. And I learned a lot from her of just staying present to whatever is happening with you. And I hope that I could follow in her footsteps with, with, in that regard. So where I'm now in my life, I also have my own grandchildren. I see how my son and his wife are creating this beautiful space for them to grow up in. It gives me a lot of joy, although they are far, far away. It just, um, it's also that I don't see the ending of life because of that too that life goes, like you said, goes on. But Christine West, I just want to say to you, I can't believe you say you're 68. <laughs> you look like 50. <laughs> it was just incredible when you said that. I was I was uh, thinking, wow, if I can look like that at 68, I'll be very happy. So um, I just had to say that you, all you ladies look beautiful, but Christine, because you mentioned your age, was just incredible. Um, and for me, it's about how we show up in life, our presence as well. And yes, we have ailments and whatever happens, but it, it's that burning flame inside of us that continues, even through those times when the body starts to give up. But I'm not personally worried about that yet. Thank you, I'm complete. I, I wanted to say it sounds like your mother was a good role model or is she still alive no good role model um because as you said she bought a car at 87 it's kind of like you know try not to think things through too much like you have to have it all figured out i could see myself trying to make a decision like that and go oh but what about this what about that what about that you know and she just obviously was thinking more in the present and thinking more about her situation at 87, not where is this going to lead down the road? And that's probably a good lesson uh, for all of us, not to try to feel like we have to have everything figured out, maybe stick more with what feels right in the moment and, and what makes sense in the moment and not worry too much about whether it's going to make sense in another year or two or three. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I'm complete. I just want to mention I was in the US in 2012 at some stage. I attended a dream a dream writing retreat with Robert Moss, the shaman. And he was already then in his late 70s, like, like really late 70s. And people used to, and he was a, he's an author as well. He wrote many books about dreaming and uh, shamanic things and the likes. But when people were asking, he said, when people were asking, oh, when are you going to retire? That was the one thing I learned from him. He said, I'm never going to retire. I'm going to do, I'm going to teach this till I, till I can't move anymore. And then the universe will take care of me. I'll be taken care of. I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to just continue with what my heart's desire is. My heart's, in his case, his heart's desire was to share this wisdom about dream, dream, um, dreaming and dream writing and things like that. And for me, that was, again, another role model of, and then, I mean, he's still alive. He's still doing it. In this, it's like ten years later, eleven years later, and he's still doing it. He's so with it. And Barbara Marx Albert was the same. She was so with it till just before she passed. She 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 got ill because of her leg got infected, and then she passed in the hospital. But she was flying around teaching at the age of 87, 88, in the world, all over the world. And I think it's a lot to do how we think about it then and how we then con the body mind heart connection, how connected these are all are and how we take care of ourselves through the process. I'm thinking about about this what we already said what is worthwhile uh, the life now from now on what do I want to bring to the world and how can I do that I admire people who have a passion for whole for their whole life and from the you know also I saw a, a director in a concert of the Berliner Philharmonic Bloomstead he is called I think he is 92 or something or 93 and there's a whole concert, uh, you know, in the evening. He has to be led to the to the stage, but how he does the music is, is not like this, you know, but these little movements and this face. I mean, this passion, I admire people who, who have this, um, how can I say this? There is no doubt that's the right thing, what they are doing, and they are doing it all the time. I, I don't have anything like this. So I'm I'm any type four, dear uh, Christine. I'm, uh, envy is one of my um, vices. So I envy people who really know what they need to do and they do it, you know? So, well, how is it for you? Do you know what, what exactly is worthwhile living the, the rest of your life? Yeah, I've got one thing is that the Enneagram found me. I didn't go looking for it. And so I practiced and studied and worked at the Institute, um, Russ Hudson and Don Riso, for nine, ten years. And myself own it. And it comes very actually when I'm facilitating a group or one on one. And, um, and somehow I've I put a pause on that because you know, it's there should be no reason here because it's and um, it's the only thing I feel like I've ever been really good at. The only thing. I mean, I used to teach a lot, and you know, I got awards for that, but it didn't touch because of the subject matter. But um, I think because I live kind of isolated, and I hate marketing. I won't do Facebook. I won't do this or that. And so I'm not quite sure that I've discovered how to bring it into the world um, the way that I had been doing for 
before them. And I I guess what I'm missing to do that is just be curious about that a little bit more. How, How can I bring it into the world? As opposed to saying, well, I'm not doing it now. And that's just disgusting. <laughs> that's not inspiring or spiritual. So I think maybe asking the questions about what, what's possible now that would be relevant. Because it's kind of, I'm not in Asheville. I'm more in the woods. You know, um, in small towns around me. So I get to be curious about how to do that in a way that feels in my integrity. I don't need, to, I don't feel like I need to charge things. I don't feel like I need to. The other time in our culture says it doesn't, people don't value something unless they pay something for it. So I that might be a way that I'm just looking at how I keep myself how I keep myself from doing what my my greatest gift is and my greatest passion. I, get, you know, I need to let go of that, let go of that, and discover something new. Yes, thank you. Sounds like other people don't have that challenge. <laughs> I think I might. I think it might be uniquely um, my journey. So thank you for listening, <laughs> Christine. I just wanted to say I don't think there's a right or wrong, or that everybody must be like Robert Moss, for example, or Barbara Mox Hubbard. I think I have got beautiful friends who are just enjoying their lives. They don't do something specifically. They lift. They lift full lives, and they just live each day. And they have, you know, they. It's it's not that they. They've got this mission that they feel they must still complete. So I don't think there's a right and wrong in this. I think whatever comes from the inside, it's good. It's that's at least just my perspective on it. Um, I've known many great people who have. We have we all been a contribution to the world in very different ways in any way. So I think our purpose is not one specific way. I think there are many ways. And for me, just being showing up fully every day, wherever we are, is already by itself really meaningful. But I wanted to ask you, what's the vice of a seven? You said that four's vice is envy. What is seven's envy? Of what is seven's vice? <laughs> Vice, what the... yeah, like Heidi said, she's a four, and right. her vice is is envy. Right. Um, so I'm just curious. Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot now, but I was just curious. <laughs> well, I mean, I think sometimes it's it depends a little bit on where you are in your life journey and the kind of situation, because it could be several. But um, what I do know about. Yeah, Claudio Naranjo says gluttony is the seven. Yes. Gluttony. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Thank you. So I just was curious because I'm not that familiar with. I don't that know that with. word. What is that word? Yeah. This is no. Um, Wanting to have all the good things, something like this, you know? It's Getting... like it's like Midas is it's like my uh the king of Midas, he wants all the gold. Is that right, yeah. Heidi? Yeah. So it's not the same as greed. It's different from no, no. greed. No. Um, yeah. yeah. No. I think the way I interpret that is that there always needs to be a life that's got me jazzed. It's got me excited. It's got me doing it and doing it and um, versus pausing every now and then. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got it. Thank you. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> that was funny. When did you come? <laughs> oh, okay.
<laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> it looked as if you were tumbling down. <laughs> so we're glad it's only your mobile. <laughs> yeah, that was really funny, especially at that moment. <laughs> Thank you, Christine, for was saying a little bit about that. I appreciate that. I know it's not on topic, but thank you. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I I wondered um people say when you're getting older time passes by quicker. I don't have that. It's for me, it's it's like there are some days like last week that I was in bed and not feeling well, but mostly I think life is really interesting. <laughs> so I really like to learn to um get to know people. Maybe I'm not that big traveler and like other people but I'm a big like I'm more in connection I'm traveling in connection so to say with people and um yeah so time is for me nothing I I'm I'm concerned about it's happening so to say <laughs> in this 3d world and as you said, Hanali, I'm when my mom passed, I was with her till the the end. And then I had a shaman friend who said, "Oh, let me check in." And he was, and then he called me back, and he said, "She's like a little girl. She's just going into the light. I mean, she's no detour. <laughs> just." <laughs> skipping into the light and and I could see and even the doctor next day when so I had the, the death watch overnight and when the doctor came la and next day he said she's so peaceful and and I had this feeling that death is not nothing you have to be afraid of my my dad he was uh, 92 and I told you about abuse and some other so he was so scared he was like really like shivering with fear because I mean a good catholic knows that um, at least uh, what do you call it, purgatory <laughs> is is awaiting if not more and so I I just sat down and said, we're taking care of mom. So he was afraid that because she had dementia and he was afraid if he's not there anymore, no, nobody's, no, we take care of her. And, and then I said, you don't have to be afraid of purgatory or whatever. Um, the angels will, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, but they will, they will. And so he calmed down. And what did you say, Hadi? No, just receive you, you know, yeah. Yeah. we'll receive you. Yeah, and, and, and I could, so his his shaking uh, went away little by little. And, and then he was peaceful. And when we we carried as siblings, we carried him to the grave. And when we let down, I, I looked at him and there was nothing else to say because I had cleared it with him before he passed. And so, yeah, there is no fear of what could happen. Or, I mean, I'm afraid of violence, physical violence, but. When my time comes, then. Yeah, I would come back to this feeling of how time passes. You said it's not passing quicker. I think it is passing quicker, but I'm not really sure if it wasn't passing as quick as now, also before. So, because we forget yes. how it is. 
But the difference which I feel is as if there is no interruption, as if time in these last few years, as, as it is fluid. And I can feel it, for instance, I go to bed, wake up, go to bed, wake up. And it is as if there was nothing in between, you know. And that's also, sometimes I don't even feel necessity to say hello to people or good morning because, you know, we just were together. It's it's like, oops, or is it different now? Ah, I should say good morning. You know, it's, it's like, like it's, it's all, the, all the time the time is. <laughs> so, uh, and I find it quite interesting also because, I like to be in bed. I like to dream or to whatever. When I'm awake, uh, there's also things to do, let's say, or to to experience. And so it's sometimes uh, during the day, I think, did I dream this or was it real? So that is sort of a continuum of, of time. And it's not so anymore so divided between this is work, this is evening, this is leisure or something. It's all grieving together. That's my experience. I see you nodding, <laughs> finally. <laughs> I find that there's just certain routine things that I do that you're mentioning that Heidi also, it's kind of like, you know, when I first sit up in bed before I put my feet on the floor to get out of bed, it's like, oh my gosh, I was just doing this two seconds ago, yesterday you know, yesterday morning, but it, it feels like it's compressed, like the whole day between was momentary, although I can think about all the things I did, but there's certain just routine acts that we do that it just feels like, oh, I was doing this a second ago. I don't, I don't know how that happens, but it feels like that. Like it's a, almost like it's a flashback or something, you know? Um, And I, I put in the chat, actually, Last night, Tom and I watched a good movie on Netflix called Ira Ora, and it's about time travel. And he, uh, the main actor, um, finds out what's important um, because of the, he's not trying to time travel. He, he does it inadvertently. Um, but as this is happening to him, he begins to have to understand his life a little bit differently because uh, he's missing chunks of it. So I recommend it, especially since we're talking about the um, the topic of of time and what does that mean if you if you gain more time or lose more time. I don't know. I have a very strong case of uh, FOMO. You guys all know what FOMO is: fear of missing out. F O M O fear of missing out. And uh, yeah, so I always want to know if if something's happening. <laughs> I kind of want to know about it or be a part of it. And um, death is like the ultimate FOMO. You know, what am I going to miss out on? What's going to happen afterward that I'm not going to know about and I'm not going to be a part of? So, um, I mean, I'm saying it in a funny way, but I, I do feel like, you know, mortality makes us realize there's going to be a whole lot of life going on uh, after I'm not here uh, to participate in it. Um, so it, it it grabs my FOMO. Could you give us the name of that Netflix? I put it in the chat. There, okay. Yeah. Thank you. And we've, think in We Flow, we talk about the JOMO, the joy of missing out. That's right. I remember you said that last time, joy of missing out, right? Try to be who somebody had brought that up. Maybe I, I forget who, but yeah, I hadn't heard that one, but that's a good one. Try to. Yeah. That but would be Tom. Lady, sorry. Tom would be, lady. Tom would be joy of missing out. I asked him, do you want to do this? And he's like, why? <laughs> like, well, <laughs> So yeah. don't you ladies think that if we look at awareness and consciousness, that as consciousness is raise, rising, our perception is changing. So how we perceive time will also change because time is locality-based. 
the space-based and locality-based as a single point in time, as a reference point for us to refer back to. But I think the more we go into higher states of consciousness and our vibrations are rising, our perception of time might feel quicker to our bodies and our experience because we perceive differently. So I, 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 there's something I mean you were sharing about it as well that you know you and you, Christina, of your own story of what happened in between, you know, like yesterday and today. It it's our perception of time because we can take in so much more currently from what we used to be able to take in, but for where the world is right now and our experience in the world. I I, I just feel there's some link there. Isn't that perception in general, not only of time, also of your body and of other things, of relationships and so that they are changing? As I said before, I don't even know if it was different or, or, or the same before. So that's, yeah, I think it's changing. How is it with you, other other girls? When you say it's changing, I'm not sure what you're referring to, Heidi. What is the it? The perception, the perception of whatever it is, you know, your your body, your your thinking, your mind, your 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 functioning of whatever, you know, or uh, or time, or the relationships, or the uh, other people, how you relate, and so on. Or even simple things like weather or, or, or atmosphere or energy. Don't we change the perception also there? With consciousness, it's just a, a question. I have the impression, but I'm never sure about it. I suppose it's always changing, but I mean, not always notice the way they are. Unless I'm looking back, oh, that was what that was, as opposed to spending much more attention just in this moment. I think it's constantly changing for me. Now, I meant it also in a, maybe in a different way, more in the comparison with the traum state, the different states of consciousness also, you know. After I had uh, some experience with, uh, with these, uh, let's say, drug travels, and that has shifted the also the the perception, the normal perception. So, you know, and as I said, sometimes dream and then you are awake and I think, has it really been or was it in your dream? So I don't need to figure it out completely, but this is a different platform of where from where I look into the world into my world and into the other world let's say in this way that's a really interesting question that you're posing because what I'm thinking of you know when I mentioned feeling like no time has passed when I'm first putting my feet on the floor in the morning, that's kind of like a, a perception of, of the gross, right? The, the physical, the, the concrete. And that seemed like in some ways momentary, but it makes me wonder as you're mentioning that, Heidi, if you go up to other states more subtle or causal, you know, does time and the perception of time and, and what we think about, is it expanding more? Is that, that's what I would suspect that it's expanding and it doesn't feel compressed, but maybe when you're dealing with the gross level of consciousness, time is very specific and concrete. So it's an interesting question. I guess it would um, causal and non-dual. I guess it would suggest that there's <clears throat> a greater connection with a, with a broader range um, of things, and and time is almost. I guess when you get to non-dual, I guess time is not even <laughs> is not even necessarily a thing to contemplate um, because it's all unified. So what happens to time? I don't know. Of 
for me, um, in my own, I can only speak for my own experience, of, of course, is that when I'm in that time, it's a timeless space then, that even you say no, non-dual space, you don't, there's not even a perception of time. It doesn't matter. It's, you literally experience all that is in whatever way you're experiencing it. So in that unified field, because it's not specifically, that's why I say for me, I've always felt that time is something of the left brain that we had to, that we can't classify and measure and compare and things like that. Whereas in that state, we beyond that, that state of mind. Um, so it's not particular, it's not to one point. And I've taught a lot of people about working with time, especially in the business world, like working with CEOs and the likes. Um, they, they would be stressed because they don't have enough time to, for all their activities. There's just so much pressure and whatever they must do and the likes. And, and to, play, to work with a time guardian, which I call the time guardian. And then you teach them that when you need to compress time, so you need something to happen quicker, you can work with time to make it happen quicker. And if you need more time, say you're running late for a meeting, time will expand. And it works. It actually works. It's very, it's very real. It's not some, it's just not some woo concept. When you start working with time as your friend, it, 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 you know, it's, it's that it's the interflow of energy. There's something going on. It's like the universe responds to us in some way, and things start to happening. For example, say I'm late for a meeting. It's like, please, please, I need time to, you know, I need to get there quicker. And then some, suddenly the traffic opens up. You know, it's like synchronicity is happening. And it's real. For example, so it's very physical and real. It's practical. It's not like it's just a concept. But where you really start to work with time in that way, it, it, it's like anything else in the universe. We're not alone. We, don't, we co-create every single moment with the entire universe. We are not these single little dots um, or in isolation. And for, for me, with time, we can do the same. That when we do need more time, we can. Or when we want something to happen quicker, if it comes from the heart, it, 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 there's nothing that can stop it. And if we believe it, obviously, because if we don't believe it will happen, won't happen. Our experience of it, obviously, will not happen either. So, when you, before you started, I wanted to say that maybe we don't even perceive time at all, but we can only think about time. And that ties in what you are saying. When we think in a certain way of time, now we don't have, I don't have time and I have to go up and then there is no time because it's, you try to hurry up and then things go wrong and everything, you know. And um, the question is for me now, uh, time you perceive in backward. But at the moment, when I think now, do I perceive time? No, I don't. I'm here, you know. But then later I can say, oh, I was an hour with the girls in the in, in the Zoom room, you know. But actually, when you are in the in the present, there is there is no time. No? Yeah. Interesting. Talking about time, I need to go. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's nice yeah you bring <laughs> us back to <laughs> down to earth <laughs> yeah that's it's nice i mean we have done our all nice chat hour i'm glad that you were all here and that is a topic you know and it's so interrelated with spirituality and and with life with with everything i thank you for your contributions and we might Continue it soon. We meet in two weeks. Yes.